The following program is brought to you by the faithful friends and partners of Gregory Dickow Ministries. And the Lord spoke to me three or four days ago and he said, there is a shift taking place. There is a shift about to take place in our lives, a shift that is going to bring us from repeating our history to stepping into our destiny. We are about to have a shift. There's about to be a shift from a difficult journey to his yoke is easy and his burden is light. There is about to be a shift from us trying to find the will of God to the will of God finding us. Welcome to The Power to Change today. I'm Gregory Dickow, and friend, you heard it right. It is coming. What's coming? The shift. I'm declaring over you that a shift is coming in your marriage, your relationships, in your finances. You're about to see a shift from repeating history to experiencing destiny. A shift from always failing to always succeeding. A shift from the doldrums of life to a joy-filled life beyond your wildest dreams. And the trigger point for this shift is when you unlock the treasure of God's grace. So many believers have asked me, when am I gonna see my breakthrough? Or when am I gonna see the miracle happen? Or when am I gonna see my prayers answered? Well, we're gonna discover the answer to every one of these questions in today's program. Because what you're about to experience is a message I preached recently in New York for my dear friend, Dr. Creflo Dollar. The schedule was full of powerful preachers like Dr. Dollar, Bishop T.D. Jakes, and others. And this was the closing message of the camp meeting. I entitled it, Grace in the Wilderness. Everyone's been through the wilderness. It's time to come out. This is all about that shift that I've been telling you about, and it's coming your way. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back to tell you more about how you can experience this shift, this amazing grace in the wilderness. Check this out. There's going to be a shift in our lives from almost right to right. You see, what makes the difference between victory and defeat as believers is not right versus wrong, it's right versus almost right. And for too long, the body of Christ has been almost right on so many subjects, such as thinking that we have to promise God how holy we're going to be, rather than God promising us, I have made you holy. But, Wait, we're about to see a shift from command to promise. The old covenant was about God's commands. The new covenant is about God's promises. We have to begin to interpret the Old Testament through New Testament, blood-bought, blood-washed, blood-dripping, cross focused reality and revelation. And when I say that, I mean when God says in the New Testament, be holy for I am holy, he's not commanding us to be holy, he is promising us and declaring over us and saying, be holy. And the moment he says it, it is done. Just like when he said, just like when he said to the believer, just like when he said, your faith has made you whole be made whole, it wasn't a challenge for the believer 
to become whole, it was a declaration that he was now whole. And just as God says, be holy, it's a declaration that you are now holy. You just don't know it, but you are. You're going to know it. You already know it because you've been in this church long enough, but you're about to know it at a deeper place and a deeper level. Father, I thank you for the shift that is taking place. Lift your hands to God. Father, I thank you right now for the anointing and for the presence of God in this place that makes all the difference, your presence that never leaves us or forsakes us. Lord, for those that are wondering, did you leave them? Reveal to them you have never left them. For those that are afraid that you might leave them now, reveal to them that you will never leave them. For those that are wondering if you're far off, reveal to them that you are right here, right now, and you are with us, you are in us, and you are for us. Give us revelation knowledge tonight in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for it. Amen and amen. Come on, let's thank God one more time, and you may be seated. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not an invitation to suffering. It is an invitation to joy. It is an invitation to happiness. It is an invitation to freedom. It is an invitation to experience all that Jesus paid for us to have. Look with me in your Bibles to John chapter 1. I love John the Apostle who wrote the book of John, the book of 1 John and 2 John and 3 John, and by the time he was done writing those things, they, they wanted to get rid of him. They tried to throw him out of a building, and he fell down on his knees praying. They tried to boil him in oil. They tried to boil him in oil, and he just, I mean, he just got a suntan. That's all that happened when they did that. And they said, oh, the emperor said, I know what I'll do with this man. Let us exile him to the island of Patmos and shut him up, because he's already written the book of John, He's already written the book of 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. Let's silence him. Let's shut him up. Let's put him on an island where he can't talk to anybody. Let's put him on an island where there's nobody around. And they stick him on this island called the island of Patmos. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Jesus shows up. How many know, no matter how you might be stuck on some island that you feel like you've been exiled to, Jesus is going to show up on your island and give you a revelation and make the world realize, oh, okay, devil, you think you're going to shut up John? Okay, you think you're going to shut him up after John and 1 John and 2 John and 3 John? I'll tell you what, I'll visit him on an island and I'll give him the book of Revelation. It doesn't matter how you, how the devil tries to silence you, God is going to give you a revelation that the world, everybody in the world knows about the book of Revelation. Isn't it just like God to turn stuff around, how the devil tried to silence and shut John up, and yet then came the book that believer and unbeliever alike know the book of Revelation. They don't understand it. Believer and unbeliever alike doesn't understand it. <laughs> John chapter 1. Let's look there. Woo! Get ready. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Here we go. John chapter 1. We're, we're, we're going on a journey, and I want you to see some scriptures, some foundational scriptures, and I want you to see verse 16. And of his fullness... Have we all received and grace for grace? Of his fullness have we all received and grace for grace. One translation says, and we have received the fullness of his grace that brings blessing after blessing after blessing. The fullness of his grace brings blessing after blessing after blessing. We do not ever have to chase the blessing of God. We never have to try to obtain the blessing of God. The fullness of his grace releases the blessing of God, the blessing that comes over and over and one blessing added upon another blessing, added upon another blessing, added upon another blessing. This wasn't our idea, this is God's idea. Jesus is the fullness 
of this grace upon grace that causes us to experience blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing to where it over takes us, as the book of Deuteronomy says, it comes upon us and overtakes us. And don't be afraid of the Old Testament, please, because we need to understand, we need to read the Old Testament through New Testament understanding. So when I see the blessings in Deuteronomy chapter 28, and it says that all, all of these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, I'm not, we're not disqualified from that because we're under grace. We are actually qualified for that now because we're under grace, for it is not our obedience that brings us into the blessing of the Lord. It is the obedience of Jesus Christ. Through one man's disobedience, all have sinned and all became sinners, and through one man's obedience, all have become righteous, or all those that believe have become righteous, and we have become the seed of Abraham by which all these blessings shall now come upon us and overtake us. So when we read the Old Covenant, we're redeemed from the curse of the law, but we're not redeemed from the blessings of the Old Testament. We are redeemed unto those blessings and blessing upon blessing upon blessing and, and, and even more because we have a better covenant than the Old Covenant, right? Because the, the Old Covenant, the old covenant was, was good but it revealed our flaws and it revealed our sin, but the new covenant is better because it washes away our sin. You know, now, the Bible says we have a, the Bible says we have a better covenant with better promises put in force by better blood, the blood of Jesus, irrevocable blessing. The blessing of God is irrevocable. The gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. They're without repentance. He doesn't give and take away. You know, I know that we, you know, Christians sing songs, the Lord gives and he takes away, and preachers have preached, the Lord gives and he takes away. We need to clarify what he gives and what he takes away. He gives the blessing and takes away the curse. He gives the goodness and takes away the evil. He gives his love and takes away the fear. But this, this, this better covenant is so amazing. When, you know, it's a new covenant. Now, when I was a kid, I don't know what detergent people use nowadays to clean their clothes, but when I was a kid, they, they had Tide. I don't know what you use nowadays, Clorox or whatever, Tide. But I would go to the store when I was little, and all of a sudden, I would see these boxes of Tide, and then in the corner of the, of the carton, it would say, new and improved. <laughs> and the Lord said, I want you to remember that Tide, new and improved, because that's what my new covenant is. And I said, what do you mean, Lord? And he said, well, when you went to the store and you saw that you saw that new tide, new and improved tide. What does that mean? And I said, well, that means, Lord, that that new tide can do at least what the old tide did and then some. So all the blessings are ours because of the fullness of his grace. But I... I must say, by the way, I, 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 I'm going to cut down some of the things that I want to share because I, I, had, um, I had my wife look over my notes before I came tonight, and, and I said, well, just cross out whatever you think I, I shouldn't say. So in conclusion, I'd like to just thank you for the opportunity. Go with me to the book of Romans, chapter 12, and I want to read this to you from the message translation. And on your way over there, I've studied, I've listened, I've failed, I've asked God, and I've come to a few conclusions to answers or that answer the questions, 
Why aren't I truly happy? What is my, why does my faith not produce miracles? Why aren't I seeing more power and more of God's promises come to pass? Why aren't more people getting saved? And the answers became the same to all of those questions. The world of religion has proclaimed long enough a wrong concept of God. And the grace of God, when the veil was torn, when Jesus died on the cross and the veil was torn in two, it not only gave us access to the throne of his grace, but it peeled back every distorted, it peeled away every distorted view that this world had of God. Every wrong concept of God was peeled back. When the, 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 the grace of God is the unveiling of who he really is. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. And so he is the fullness of grace. Whatever we see him doing, it is the picture of what we can expect in our own lives. Now, we have to understand history is divided up into three parts. History is divided up into, if I can just put it to you this way, it's divided up into what God will do what God did, or what God is doing, I should say, and what God has done. You have, to, you have to view history from that point of view. Three, three times, or three eras of history. What God will, will do. He said to the serpent in the garden, the seed of the woman is going to come and bruise your head. That's what God will do. That's the Old Testament or the, old, the oldest part of history. That's what God will do. Then Jesus comes and we, we, we see his life in the Gospels. That's Jesus doing what God said he would do. And then he brings us into this era, this dispensation that we are now in until the Lord's return, and that is the era of, or the dispensation of what God has done. So now the Old Testament saints could look to what God would do and the people during the life and ministry of Jesus could look at what God was doing, but we look back and see what is done when Jesus said it is finished. He meant it is done, it is settled, the price is paid, the bill is over, the curse is broken. Preachers have said, Send me money, and I'll break the curse <laughs> off of you. Those aren't the preachers to send money to, but the ones to, to sow towards and to sow into are the ones that say, the curse is already broken. Amen. We're not trying. We're not here to break anything. We're here to discover what's already been broken. And life has to be lived from that point of view. And God's called us to live from that point of view. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. And again, I want to read this to you from the message translation. It'll be different in different translations. But this is an amazing translation. And he says in verse 3, Romans chapter 12, verse 3. I am speaking to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has given me. And especially as I have responsibilities in relation to you. Living then as every one of you does in pure grace. It's important that you not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it all to you. And the only, listen, this is exactly what this translation says. 
And the only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what he does for us, not by what we are and what we do for him. Let me read that to you again. He says, do not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it all to you. Say that, God brings it all to me. The only, he says, the only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what he does for us, not by what we are and what we do for him. Now that smacks religion in the face because religion is all about what man can do for God. But Christianity is all about what God has done for man. And do you know when we get that right, the world is going to come running, running to Jesus. There's a powerful verse I love. I love to preach out of this verse and talk about this verse. And, and it says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 6, it says, everyone wants to be the friend of him that gives gifts. It's an amazing verse. Do you know anyone that likes to give gifts? Do you got a friend that likes to give gifts? Or do you have a relative that likes to give gifts? Now we have got to get this turned around to where we are telling this world about the greatest gift giver in the universe for every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights with whom is no variation or shifting shadow. Well, there you have it. It's time for your shift, a time from shifting from repeating history to living in God's destiny. It's time for a shift from the wilderness to the promised land. This shift takes place when you break free of religion, when we break free of the bondages of legalism and self-effort and begin to lean upon the amazing grace of God. You know, we sing that song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. But why isn't it truly sweet for so many people? Because of a lack of true knowledge of what God's grace can do for you. The Christian walk is not living by a bunch of do's and don'ts. No, it's leaning on what Jesus has already done for us. What Jesus finished on the cross. The Bible says in John 1.16 that from his abundance of grace, we have received the fullness of his grace, leading to one blessing after another. That's the anointing that I want you to walk in. That's the anointing that is reaching the world, saving marriages, transforming people's lives, moving people from the valley to the mountaintop. And that's what I pray you experience, and I want to help you walk in that. That's why I put together this truly amazing grace collection to go along with the message that you just heard. Today you only got a, a portion of this revelation of God's goodness and grace. There's so much more to get you through the wilderness into the promised land. This all new collection, amazing grace collection. I want to put it in your hand. This is how you're going to receive the shift that you've needed in your life. Listen, I want you to have a copy of my series, The Grace of God, Living in, in God's Divine Ability and Favor. This is my hallmark message on grace where I unpack the truth about what grace really is and how it will empower you to live the victorious life God created you for. I've got so many more pieces of material that I want to put in your hand. This is an amazing grace collection. It will change your life. I want to share with you my teaching on the goodness of God. Listen, when you realize that God is for you, not against you, that everything and anything he thinks about you is good, it will shift your life in a brand new direction and it'll set your expectations for the greatest days of your life. They can begin today. My announcer's coming to tell you more, then I'll be right back to pray with you and believe for this amazing grace to explode in your life. Watch this. You heard it right here. There's a shift and it's going to change your life, restore your finances, heal your relationships, and unleash the supernatural power of God. The shift is the revelation of grace. And when you understand it, you will be free from bondage, free from pain, and free to live. Grace is power. Grace is life-changing. And Gregory Dickow is committed to sharing this revelation with millions around the world. It's by my grace that you will experience all of the promises of God. It is not our promising God. It's Him promising us.
People from all walks of life are saying yes to spread the gospel of grace. Will you join the movement? Will you help to reach the world with this important revelation? When you call today with your faith seed of $35 plus shipping and handling, you help reach homes in America, Africa, the Middle East, and more through the power of television. Your gift guarantees that this life-saving ministry continues and the revelation of grace goes forth like never before. As his way of saying thank you, Pastor Dickow will send you two powerful resources. First, you'll receive the grace of God, living in God's divine ability and favor. This is his most requested series on grace, where he unpacks truth from the Bible about what grace is, what it means, and how it empowers you to live successfully. Next, you will receive the series experiencing the goodness of God. Right believing is the key to right living, and this series will help you gain the right understanding of God so that you experience the abundant life you deserve. And there's more. Pastor Dickow will also include a free copy of the entire message you heard today, Grace in the Wilderness. You only heard a small portion of this amazing and life-shifting revelation. You will want the complete teaching to minister to your soul and equip you to lean on God's amazing grace. All of this for just $35 plus shipping and handling. Stand with Pastor Dick out to change the world through the gospel of grace. Millions are waiting for you. Call now. Well, thank you so much for joining me on The Power to Change today. And thank you for your partnership because every time you give into this ministry, you are transforming people's lives around the world, one life at a time. I want to pray for your needs right now. Father, I thank you for hope that everything can change. Ignite hope that your amazing grace can transform everything in our lives. Deliver us from the bondage of trying to perform for you. And Lord, let there be true acceptance of your grace, your mercy, your love that will change us from the inside out in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, there is hope. I want you to get ready for the blessings of God to come upon you and overtake you. God loves you more than words could ever describe. I pray this ministry would prove to you and this ministry would impart to you the love of God that will never fail in your life. Don't miss our next broadcast now. I can't wait to see you then. God bless. This program has been brought to you by the faithful friends and partners of Gregory Dickow Ministries.